Today, the FDA authorized a second COVID-19 booster shot for adults age 50 and older. People will be eligible for a fourth dose of Pfizer or Moderna at least four months after their first booster or that third dose. The FDA had previously authorized a fourth shot for people who are immunocompromised. Our nine health expert, Dr. Paul Coley, back with us today. Talk a little bit more about that. So the FDA's approval, now this goes to the CDC, and they, uh, unfortunately, we've become familiar with this process. <laughs> yes, you yeah. have. So a little bit of a big surprise, actually, because the studies really came from people over the age of 60. So they extrapolated it to add people over the age of 50. Now the CDC will offer what we think is a permissive recommendation, meaning if you want to get it, go ahead and get it. We're not going to put our money down one way or the other, but it's an individual decision. But not everybody's on board with this. A lot of experts aren't on board with this fourth dose. And, and why is that? Why do they not support that idea? So I think the first part, Kim, is because the data was 60 and above, and it was only really preventing severe illness and hospitalization, which we already think we're doing pretty good with, right. just with three doses. But the second part of it is, what do we know about, about rolling this out on a population level? How mm. long is that immunity even going to last or that extra protection? Is it worth what you're investing, essentially, with the cost and potentially the risks of side effects? Because when you start doing things on a population level, you get more side effects. Well, as a doctor, it's hard enough to, I'm sure, advise one patient to truly understand one patient. Uh, so to advise all our viewers and ask you, you know, to, if you're over 50, should you be someone who wants to go out and get that second booster shot right now? So what I'm telling my family members and friends is that if you're over 50 and you live with somebody who's sicker or you yourself are sicker or you're indulging in high risk behaviors, like you, Tom, having a lot of parties every I was, weekend. I was, I was just trying to think of my high risk I behaviors. Was like, I was excited for a second. Am I? No, I'm no, not. not. <laughs> so if, if you're fitting the demographic where your risk of exposure is higher, especially as we're seeing that BA2 is becoming dominant now, over 55% of cases, then yes, go and get it now. If you feel like you're on the lower end, you work from home, you know, you're pretty healthy, you're not really doing a lot of high-risk behaviors, maybe wait until April 6th when the FDA is going to meet to talk about variant specific April 6th is vaccines. a few days away. I mean, it's, it's not that far to wait. So, I mean, unless you really feel like you're around or, or are immunocompromised, you, you think... I think wait for most week. adults, I would say it's reasonable to wait to see what's coming. Now, we won't get a, a variant-specific vaccine on April 6th. We'll just hear from the FDA as to whether that's something they're going to ask the companies to develop. So if you're in that high-risk group right now, because we know your antibodies have gone down after about four months, go ahead and get it. For most people, I would say six to nine months, and that's a Dr. Coley recommendation, not an <laughs> FDA recommendation. Right. But that seems to me maybe the sweet spot when you start to lose a lot of immunity and maybe can benefit from another dose. And waiting till April 6th, you can kind of see what happens. Unless you got a bunch of darties to go to or something. Darties. Um, the under six age group, there's been some more data now about how effective this has been, especially for the Omicron variant. What have you discovered for children? So what we've seen in children, the Moderna vaccine at a quarter dose of the adult, so 25 micrograms as opposed to 100, is offering protection of about 38 to 44%. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a fair amount of protection, especially because it's against this variant. And we know that keeping kids protected from infection can prevent progression to long COVID and those types of complications. Right. So if the FDA decides to approve that, I, I as a parent, I, as, a, as an aunt, or would tell my family members that are parents to absolutely 100% go out and get it because it's comparable to what we see with the flu shot, for example, and yeah. other vaccines. Will April 6th also tell us a little bit more about the, the potentiality of this becoming an annual shot? We seem yeah. to be heading there. We aren't there. Is April 6th going to provide some of that data for us maybe about what this shot might be or what it might become? Very much so. So not only where we're headed, but which shot we're going to get. Is it going to be an Omicron-specific variant that's coming? Which is really what I had hoped, honestly. Instead of more of the same, right. you know, to keep augmenting the same response, why don't we get an Omicron-specific variant? And the science takes some time, as you all know. Right. Hmm. And it'll be interesting if it becomes a fall thing, like the flu, or if it, you know, if it's a seasonal thing that they push, whatever. Okay. And, Okay. Well, you know what? We'll probably talk to you about it again next week. So, what well, you guys think you're <laughs> going to get yours, or wait till uh, April? I'm going to wait till April six before I learn. Well, what to I, do. I, I just off the casual discussion we've just had, I would I would be heading in that direction. But now I would say, why would not I wait? I mean, until at least April six, then learn more and certainly have a conversation with my TV doctor friend. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's always nice to have a TV doctor friend, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's convenient. <laughs> well, Dr. Coley, thanks as always. We appreciate the Thank insight. You.